Well, in a moment, we're going to have the Mexican National Anthem. Let's see if we can briefly sneak in a comment from George Foreman. And George, uh, talking about Julio Cesar Chavez in the weeks leading up to this fight, Oscar De La Hoya, by way of putting pressure on himself, has said that he will be disappointed if he doesn't knock Chavez out. When he says something like that publicly, does that become an advantage for Chavez? A great advantage because he's got a secret knockout. And with all punches, just like any powerful gun, there, guns, there are some safety positions that you can get yourself in. Oscar cannot punch when you're real close. Stay close to him all night. He can't hurt you. You can go 12 rounds. And uh, I think it's about 12 inches. If you stay that close to Oscar, uh, uh, Chavez can protect himself all night. He may not get a knockout, but he can protect himself. And it's going to take some of that famous Chavez will to crowd De La Hoya that way. Let's see if the 36-year-old six-time world champion still has it. Let's go back to the ring now for the Mexican National Anthem. To be performed by our very special guest in the ring center at this time, Renita Zamora y Julio Preciado. Y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tú sienes de oliva de la paz del arcángel divino que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas se osar un extraño enemigo Profanar con sus plantas su suelo Pienso, patria querida, que el cielo Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Mexicano soy grito de guerra El acero apresa y el grito Y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón Patria, patria, tus hijos te curan exhalar en tus aras su aliento si el clarín con su bélico acento los convoca a lidiar con valor Para ti las guirnaldas y oliva, un recuerdo para ellos de gloria, un laurel para ti de victoria, un sepulcro para ellos de honor, un sepulcro para ellos de honor. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresa y el bridor. Y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! She's the star of stage, screen, and television, a concert violinist. Two years, three months, 11 days after their first meeting, the tale of the tape for Oscar De La Hoya, Julio Cesar Chavez, the second time. De La Hoya, 11 years younger, three and a half inches taller. He weighed in much closer to the 147-pound limit. Chavez admitting to us yesterday, I just can't get all the way up to 147 pounds while I'm in training. And a five-inch reach advantage for De La Hoya. Chavez wouldn't get on a scale tonight. Oscar weighed 162 pounds as he waited in the locker room to come out to the ring for the fight. Punch that numbers, Larry. These are the numbers from the first fight. Of course, it was over in the first minute of the fight. So these numbers may not reflect the actual differences between the fighters. But since that time, they've fought a good fighter in Miguel Angel Gonzalez, here with the numbers in that fight. And as you can see, De La Hoya, more active, 
far more accurate than Chavez showing his age. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Oscar de la Hoya, Julio Cesar Chavez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the standardized rules of boxing for all world championship fights. There is no standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th the final round. Jim. Here comes Julio Cesar Chavez to enter the ring. He's known to boxing fans around the world for 22 years. Since his most mature Rocky, he is Mr. Sylvester Stone. You saw the graphic showing you the six instances in which Chavez has won a world championship. Never beyond 140 pounds. One di big difference between this fight and its predecessor. Tonight, the weight limit is 147. Back in 1996, they were fighting at 140. A weight much closer to an effective weight for Chavez. This cheering is a tribute to a prize fighter who won the hearts of his countrymen with his skill and his bravery. Julio Cesar Chavez believes this is his 106th fight. We have very carefully checked official records here and in Mexico, and we are convinced it is his 105th that he has fought 104 times, winning 100, losing to De La Hoya and to Frankie Randall, and draws with Miguel Angel Gonzalez, and of course the famous draw with Brunel Whitaker in San Antonio five years ago. an awful long time since Julio was dominant against a very good fighter. He'll have to be reaching back through time for that kind of effort tonight. De La Hoya will enter wearing the same robe and the same garb that he wore to enter the ring in 1996. The reason? He says this is unfinished business. Now, he, he thinks the first round of this fight is the fifth round of the last fight. Another crowd love fest for De La Hoya. There's the reason why. 28 wins, no losses, no draws, 23 KOs for the welterweight champion and the man regarded by many as the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport today. Certainly the number one pound for pound marketing and crowd attraction in the sport. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, courtesy of Caesars Palace, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser presents 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. Luther Mack, and Dr. James Maid, Executive Director Mark Ratner, Physicians at Ringside, Chief Physician Dr. Flip Homansky, Attending Physicians Dr. James Wishgame, Dr. William Berliner, and Dr. Margaret Goodman. Timekeepers at the bell and counting for the knockdown, seconds will be Al Bicek and Mike Lachella.
This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. WBC President, Jose Suleiman. Supervisor at ringside, Peter Naktani. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Anek Hantankan, John Keane, and Daniel Vanderveel. And when the bell rings, your referee working for the 152nd time in a world title belt, Richard Steele. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Are you ready? Thomas y Caballeros están listos. From the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, green, and white. He weighs 144 and one half pounds. His professional record, 104 bouts. 100 victories, 84 of those by knockout. He has only two losses with two draws. Tonight, he comes to the ring with two things on his mind. Revenge and victory that will return him to glory. Here is the challenger, a six-time champion in three divisions, the former super featherweight world champion, former lightweight world champion and former super lightweight champion of the world, Damas y Caballeros de Culiacán, Mexico, Julio Cesar Chavez. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue, and weighing 146 and one half pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1992. And now, as a professional, he is a four-time world champion with a perfect record of 28 consecutive victories, scoring 23 knockouts along the way without a loss. Tonight, he plans only victory and his ongoing march to boxing history. Ladies and gentlemen, from East LA, presenting the former junior lightweight world champion, the former lightweight world champion, the former super lightweight world champion, and reigning, defending, and undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, El Nino de Oro, the golden boy, Oscar De La Okay, we've both been here many times before. The rules and regulations still remain the same, and I will enforce them. Shake hands and good luck. Oscar, excuse me, Chavez has not beaten a top fighter in the eight years since his dramatic victory over Meldrick Taylor. His task tonight, to beat a top fighter who is bigger, and younger. There's been a lot of speculation in recent days about whether Julio Cesar Chavez is legitimately conditioned for this fight. He knows what was written about him in the Los Angeles Times by Bill Klaschke three days ago. Klaschke said that he spent 24 hours in Breckenridge, Colorado at Chavez's training camp, and Chavez never lifted a glove during the period of time he was there. So Julio pulled his shirt off for us yesterday and said, look at my hard belly, look at my muscles. I lifted weights. I'm ready. He'll need it. Chavez's job tonight is to stop, block, and get out of the way of everything. Don't get touched by any of Oscar's shots. Oscar's got to keep his bounce. Don't move forward unless you got a plan. Chavez staying at a distance to begin round one. Oscar
Luka just waiting and measuring and looking for a chance to throw his jab. Oscar, I said about the power of any of these big guns, they have their range. He cannot reach out beyond his feet. So stay out there, make him stick out and reach out and eventually close in. That's what Chavez must do. You need only to look at that picture to see part of the problem facing Julio. Oscar is simply a bigger man. Uh, Julio is doing good. He's landed the shot, now he moves away. Let Oscar come and pay him back. De La Hoya, in recent fights, has never minded being patient in round one, even against Patrick Charpentier in El Paso. When it was clear Charpentier couldn't hurt him at all, he waited until opportunities opened up. The Oscar danger zone is when he starts jumping and leaping around. So as long as he's not jumping, you can do anything you want. But once he gets to bounce in his legs, stay out of his way. Chavez is doing a good job of that. Once he starts bouncing, move. Because when Deloy gets the bounce in his legs, that means he's seen something. And his hands start to move more freely, there right? There you are. You make him, you just block, stop, and get out of the way of everything for the first four or five rounds. Chavez, That's right? Move Garvin was left side. Away. Yep. A very tactical first round so far. Chavez trying to lure De La Hoya into something. Couple Steps of over to his left. Couple of Chavez left hooks early. There's a Chavez left jab with right right two. Chavez has got to be careful now because once you close in, you better have your hands up. Hard left hook up top by De La Hoya. That Chavez tried bounce. to retaliate, and there came the bounce. You're yeah, right. That means he's seen something. Once he sees something, you jump away. That's a hard thing for a puncher to do, is to step back, move out of the way, and that's nothing wrong with it. Just like holding the horn of a, a Western saddle. There's nothing wrong. No cut in round one this time. As we go to Julio Cesar Chavez's corner, where they speak Spanish, our interpreter there will be Ray Torres. In De La Hoya's corner, Oscar is at first reluctant to sit down on the stool. And he won't. You gotta have your, your hands in, in position and make, make sure that you move your head. Exit. Take it easy, be tranquil, and pull. get some air. Let's go. It was the jab that busted up Chavez in the first minute of the first fight. He's being asked to throw more jabs now. The length of this fight could be determined by whether or not Chavez cuts again. And as advisor Gil Clancy asks De La Hoya to throw the jab, Oscar steps out into round two and begins to try to establish it with three quick jabs. Now we start to see Chavez coming forward, the trademark style that has carried him to 100 official victories over the years. If there's ever a time not to move forward for Chavez, it's the first six rounds of this boxing match. You don't want any moving forward yet. Don't try to mix it up, but this boy can hit. And as Chavez goes in, De La Hoya starts to land left hooks. Two sizzling left hooks in that exchange. Now... Right hand right hand for Chavez. The Chavez element of the crowd loving it when their man connects. There's a little blood coming from somewhere. I think it's that left eye already again. Of Julio. Julio Chavez is cut already. Well, you got to bet on Julio to bleed given his record in recent fights. In four of the last eight fights for Chavez, he has been bloodied by the time the final bell sounded. He had a plastic surgeon to take all of the scar tissue out, but sometimes, you know, you don't have much in there once you take that out to protect yeah, from the blows. Yeah, it's all, it's an abra it, it doesn't look like a cut. It looks like an abrasion, but blood is starting to form on his left eyebrow again. Yeah, but he doesn't want to be caught by Oscar's jab. Now, you want to sit back, 
Do the same thing you did in the first round. Don't allow this guy to start connecting with that left jab. Because if you do, he's going to get you with 20 more. He'd be a hell of a bad fight if he doesn't do something, George. Yeah, but that, it's about winning now. It's not about proving anything. Just go out there and win. They exchange punches. De La Hoya landed a thunderous right hand. Chavez takes it, keeps coming forward. But he's getting into a he's getting into a firefight with Chavez. I don't know that that's what he really wants to do. Oh yeah, he doesn't mind. This boy's got the power. Let me tell you. And he's got eyes. He sees exactly what he's doing. He didn't want to let Chavez get any confidence this early in the fight. That's what you don't want. The old guy starts to feel at home, and you're going to feel like you're going to have a horrible night. Watch Chavez insisted to us that De La Hoya isn't a particularly hard puncher. Certainly not as hard a puncher as Edwin Rosario or Roger Mayweather or some of the other guys that he, Chavez, has been in with. De La Hoya would love to prove that observation wrong. De La Hoya's got to start working on his left jab now. This is not the kind of fight you want with an experienced keep fighter. Out, keep him out, both of you. And De La Hoya staring daggers at Chavez as Richard Steele separates them to end the second. Let's go to work. You're all right. You gotta do your work nice and easy. How do you feel? I'm okay. When you get near him, move, your, move side to side, move your waist and get in. He, you, you gotta w watch out because he's gonna run. Except. So they worked on Chavez's left eye between rounds. You saw the pressure above the eyebrow. Now Oscar's starting to operate with his left jab. He turns on the left jab, there's no contest. He only threw nine jabs in round two. I'm sure Gil Clancy would like to see 30. De La Hoya countering as Chavez comes in. And a low blow there. Go to corner, go to corner. This is a warning. Keep him up, okay? Warning. You heard okay. Richard Steele okay. give a warning to Chavez. I'm not sure getting angry is good no, for us. No, Oscar should be listening to his corner, most importantly, right now. But Chavez, this has turned into what he wanted to turn into. He gets that 12 inches and he starts doing a lot of things. He, he's out way away when he's not doing anything. When he's effective, he gets close. You get close or you stay far away. Chavez might gladly give up a penalty point to get Oscar to abandon his game plan and war with him. Yeah, but Oscar, once he gets that left jab going, he's got it. Exchanges with his jab. De La Hoya landing counters, but not really commanding for Good long, level long range yet. Chavez. Yeah, Chavez, much sharper, much better in this fight than he was the first time around. Oscar is going to have to fight tonight, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with fighting. Jab and dig in. You can make this guy back up too. Once he was relentlessly aggressive, Chavez. He's showing. But as he gets older, he had other virtues as a fighter, and he knows how to fight. Posing as a guerrilla sniper here, and with surprising effectiveness, particularly here in the third round. Now, De, uh, De La Hoya goes to the body with that left hand now. That'll change everything. And De La Hoya's oft overlooked right hand landing there on a solid right cross. You notice about the experienced fighter, you get hit hurt, you get hurt, you don't try to pay back. You just stop the fight. Oscar missing with the left hook upstairs. Still not establishing the jab. I think the greatest mistake Oscar's got to understand that without his jab, he's just as ordinary as Chavez tonight. He's got to distinguish himself with his left jab. Left hook to the body by 
De La Hoya, Chavez bowls in and lands a right to the rib cage. Right cross again. Seems to be open for De La Hoya. Lead right hand and a left hook by Chavez. Hard left hook by Chavez to punctuate the best round he's fought against Oscar De La Hoya in two fights. There you see the flurry by De La Hoya, and as Chavez comes in, throwing that very low blow down around Tierra Del Fuego. Right there. And here was the De La Hoya reaction. There's nothing happening. Okay. Everything's all right. We're very, very calm. You first with the jab. In round three, Oscar De La Hoya landed 26 of 51 punches. Julio Cesar Chavez only threw 30, but he landed 17, and a couple of them were highly effective left hooks, including the one that finished the round. What has thrown Oscar off, off a lot, Chavez has not been aggressive. He stays his distance. Just recreated a whole nother fight, a whole nother training camp. He walks forward, gets a little distance, and backs off. How stunning it would be to De La Hoya and his supporters if this became a tactical boxing match. Without a left jab, Oscar De La Hoya, believe me, he'll, he'll be swimming, and he's swimming in deep water. Good jab to the body by De La Hoya. Another good left jab. Now he's picking it up. And a little faking. You faint it, and you do it. So he brings the left jab to the body twice Ooh. and then comes back upstairs. Chavez extends the right hand and De La Hoya lands a left hook over it. De La Hoya lands a straight right. Chavez suddenly stops throwing punches. Chavez landed a good shot, so he started to kind of assess what he's done. He's done. Oscar's going to hit him back. He's young. You hit the young guys, they're going to hit you back, whether they can see you or not. Chanting Chavez, Chavez. De La Hoya landing another right cross. And the left hook upstairs. This round has been a mystery for Chavez. He's only landed one or two, and De La Hoya is countering effectively. But still, Oscar not establishing the left jab in the way you might have expected. Now it's gone. Now we got the left jab. Now it's multiplied. And you see the bounce in the feet. You don't want him to get that. If I'm Chavez, you get a little closer, make him stop bouncing. His confidence comes when he's bouncing. You notice Chavez, once De La Hoya starts to bounce, he backs away. You can only do that with 34, 30 years, 34, 35 years. You just don't challenge those guys. This round, a scoring round for De La Hoya, who has piled up the punch count on Chavez. Chavez not busy here. There's a good left hook inside by Julio. Julio starts to pick up his confidence, and that's when Oscar's more dangerous when you get confident. And De La Hoya meeting Chavez with an uppercut as Julio stepped inside to try to score with the left again. Now Julio is landing left jabs now. You don't want that to start happening. Julio's been surprisingly effective with his jab through the first ball. First time that Oya has sat down in his corner. Oscar, I want you to move a little bit more side to side and use more the jab. You got the key like, now, Oscar. You got the key, like this round. This round, use this round as an example, okay? 
Last time it was very good. Next day. Everything is under control. He's, 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 he is. Okay, you gotta see what you want. Here you'll see some back at you. Chavez lands. De La Hoya responds. Watch Chavez as he sit on the ring, on the edge of that ring. He's ready to jump up. You know, it figures in a fight like this that Chavez gets two years older, De La Hoya two years better. But Chavez, while being two years older, is also better, certainly, than he was in their first fight. Harold, how'd you score through the first four? Well, Jim, I've got it three to one, 39-37, Oscar De La Hoya. I gave this hit to Rent Julio Cesar Chavez when he made Oscar know he was in a fight. But I tell you something, Oscar's getting me nervous by keeping those hands down at his waist. I don't know why he's doing that. He leave, he's, he's leaving his jaw exposed. But be as it may, I still think Oscar's landing the three and a half of punches, and certainly he's the busier fighter. Uh, he also has a little cut on the left side of his face. Yeah, he's got a little nick. A little nick by Oscar's left eye. I have Watch the same shoulder, score as Harold. Now this fight is turning to what Chavez wanted to do. You know, you bounce, you come a little closer to me every now and then, and I'll pay you back. He's using his left jab more effectively now than Oscar's left jab. You don't want that. Oscar's doing right now. Bounce and jab. This is, to my eyes, the most effective Julio Cesar Chavez we've seen in quite a while. And even at that, by CompuBox numbers, he's been doubled in punch output and in landed punches. Oscar keeps his hands low because Chavez is shorter and he gets a little lower. Sometimes if your hands are up high, you just can't get any shots. It's like a gunslinger. You keep him to your waist to draw quick. Do you think it also suggests that Oscar doesn't think Chavez can hurt him? No, hit. he's just, he wants to hit. He wants to land a shot, and it can't be done when his hands are up high. Chavez reaches right in and stops everything. Good left hook by Julio Cesar Chavez. He tries to follow up, stepping up onto the ropes. Deloy goes away and lands a combination to the belly. And those, those body shots are going to be the winning edge for Oscar. He's going to have to put a lot in now. Go to the body and make this guy extend his stay in the ring. But take his power away from him. Left jab jolted. Good left jab. Chavez. Deloy is face registering maximum intensity. Hard right hand over the top by Oscar. Now he's boxing. Bouncing from side to side, creating angles. Landing as he has throughout the bout. Now, he must not pay any attention to the referees and watch your shoulder. You do everything you can. Two good body shots by Julio. Harkening back to the Chavez of old. Keep him up, keep him up. Chavez continues to go to the ribcage. Deloya just misses with a potentially lethal uppercut. And I told you there's a 12 inch difference where Oscar's got no power. You gotta stay within that 12 inch. Deloya going body and upstairs. Chavez coming right back. Whoa. Richard Steele with two angry warriors on his hands tonight. I told you Slim was gaining weight tonight. Slim gained weight in the first five rounds. Stay with your punches inside. Don't go that wire. You have to use more your legs. You have to use more the jabs, all right? Are you listening? Okay. Make the jab stiff, you got to prepare that right hand. you got to feint him. Julio, we are doing, doing okay. You're doing okay. You're doing real fine. Don't worry about it. Nothing happening. He's got nothing. Don't lose your calm. Don't lose your cool. Between rounds here, Deloy a cut man Chuck Bodak with some rare work. Oscar's never been seriously cut in a fight. Bodak was working on the left side, or the outside, I should say, of the left eye. Oscar's blowing his nose a lot these days. That won't help that little cut on the side and make him swell. Well, and unlike a fighter like Chavez, Deloy is not accustomed to the sight of his own blood. 
So if it starts to flow, it'll be an interesting test for us. Chavez threw 48 punches in round five. That's the most he's ever thrown in any of 12 rounds, or nine rounds he's fought against Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar hasn't been beaten at the jab in a long time, and Chavez is doing that. Oscar's got to keep his jab up because he has the better in the reach. Use that reach. Don't get close to this man. Well, the, the hands held low, as Harold Letterman pointed out, and you emphasize, George, why Oscar's doing it, but the hands held low give Chavez a chance to land his jab. But once he gets closer, De La Hoya's got to move away, bounce, use your... You see, he pushes him because he doesn't want him that close. Back away. This is everything that Chavez wanted right now. Remember when Sugar Ray Leonard got lured into playing Roberto Duran's this macho is, game? This is one of those nights. You got to win a fight sometimes. This guy is all hyped up. You just can't out punch him. You're going to have to box him and win on points. There's a little bit of Sugar Ray against Duran in Delaware against Chavez tonight. But remember, you close in at 12 inches, and Delahoy has got no power at all. Chavez is doing an excellent job of staying close. Great step by step. Watch your shoulder. He's only an ordinary fighter when he's get close to Chavez. Chavez following the George Foreman blueprint to perfection right now. You heard George tell you before the fight that not Chavez only, must step up into De La Hoya's chest. Not only is De La Hoya's hands starting to drop, his shoulders are starting to drop. A lot of conditioning is going out of the window now. But things are changing. That's when you want good legs. Good body shot by De La Hoya. Good left hook up top by Chavez. De La Hoya willing to trade at close range. Is it the right strategy? He, oh, an uppercut. He's got no choice. It's a good left uppercut by Del Arya. Job is seemingly unhurt by the vicious uppercut that snapped his head back. But he was hurt by the left hook to the body by Del Arya. Ooh, another left hook by Chavez. Hard left hook by Del Arya. Right on the point of the chin. Oscar trying to explode Chavez as they reach the midpoint point of the bout. Respira, descansa. Don't, don't, don't stay too long inside, Oscar. You have to Box use it. One round, give yourself a breather. Box around. Okay. Box around. You don't, have to, you don't have to go out and knock him out. Box. Mira, mi hijo, si chamaco está en su distancia, téngase confianza y sube el ritmo, por favor. Okay. Deep breath. Go up and down, and, and you need to shorten up the distance. Here's Chavez now pressing the attack, but here's the uppercut from De La Hoya landing flush. Story of this fight so far, Chavez has not been cut, and he has taken De La Hoya's best shots and keeps coming. Gil Clancy told uh, De La Hoya, now box. You don't have to go for the knockout now. Box a little bit. Let's hope he takes that advice. De La Hoya starting to pump the jab. This is what makes him great when he does it. And then as an experienced fighter, Chavez, get on the outside. Concede all of that. Just don't start a fight. It's like the home run hitter who goes for home runs and goes into a slump. Gil Clancy knew, deep in his heart, he would increase De La Hoya's chances of scoring a knockout if he could convince his man not to go for a knockout. And Chavez is real smart. He turns his body left, turns his body right. That means De La Hoya's got to stand there and watch him until he straightens up again. Oscar just popping Chavez with the jab as Julio comes in. That's a strategy he has not been using in the earlier rounds. De La Hoya now is avoiding that close contact now. He's back weight, which is what he should have been doing all night. Chavez landing a jab and a right hand over the top. Doubling up on his hooks. Now he's allowed De La Hoya to find that range now. That's what you don't want to do. Stay away from him. Make him guess by not being in that range. If 
If Oscar's in contention or in condition to keep throwing the jab, he commands Chavez from long range. He, he was smart. He did his combinations and he backed away. That's what you want to do. Make this guy earn everything he gets. Chavez coming forward, tracking his man around the ring, looking very, very Chavez, even as he fails, it seems, to win rounds because of the number of punches De La Hoya lands. Well, De La Hoya was smart. In the last round, he was able to get to that body. Hard right hand, hand by Chavez. Chavez. Chavez is still hurting from that earlier body punch in the last round. Oh, a left hook. Good left hook inside by Julio. Little cut over the right eye of Chavez now. Just a little trickle of blood above the right eyebrow. At his best, nobody ever took a shot better than Chavez. And he's showing some of that iron jaw and true grit. A lot of that now is he's trying to avoid getting, being cut these days. So that's why he's not really standing toe to toe. Now he's making a mistake of following a puncher around again. You don't want to follow a puncher. Why? No, sir. Because the puncher's got something in that bag. You back away from a puncher. You don't follow him around. This has been a big round for De La Hoya. Chavez has been a target. And for the first time in the fight, a relatively easy target. Don't, don't try to hit him while don't ever extend yourself to hit him with the right hand. You gotta use more intelligence. Box him. Okay, you need to do me a little more quick, quicker. You're gonna add. Hold on, see. he's a little swollen there. In and out, like this round, beautiful, okay? Once again, okay. we see De La Hoya landing his left hand right there. And Chavez coming back Let's with go. the right hand. Let's go, second. Round eight of the schedule 12. De La Hoya said before the fight, he hoped it would go seven or eight rounds so that he could punish Chavez for the impudence he displayed after the last fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through seven? Jim, 69, 64, six rounds to one, Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, it's effective aggressiveness that counts. Julio Cesar Chavez, sometimes he's the aggressor, but he doesn't score. Oscar's just not punching him like he's doing right now. Serious business. De La Hoya to the body with vicious shots in the first half minute of this round. No, no doubt about it. He's got that confidence level up now. And Chavez is making that awful mistake of following him around. He's just like a punching bag at this point. You always concede to the puncher. I'm not going to follow you so you can get set. I have the same score as Harold. The issue now seems to be at this point in the fight, whether Chavez can make it through 12 rounds and claim some kind of victory because De La Hoya insisted that he would get a knockout. Well, one thing's for sure. It's a more committed and more spirited effort from Chavez than his severest critics would have expected. Yeah, the rematch has turned out punch. to be the mismatch everybody presumed it might be. Chavez is masked beginning to show the effects of De La Hoya punishment. Oscar concentrating on the body here in round eight. Almost as though he's consciously trying to set Julio up for something big upstairs. Oscar's very smart. He gets in, but he stands up and gets that height advantage whenever things get too rough so that uh, Chavez misses. Oscar landing left hooks and uppercuts. Another one there as Julio came in. Little swelling under the left eye of De La Hoya. We told you about the nick at the corner of the eye before. So both fighters showing some effects. Now this should not have happened with Oscar. He should not have gotten into this kind of fight. His corner is going to have to rein him in now. Blood now pouring from the lip or mouth of Chavez. But forward he comes. He steps over to Oscar's left and he steps over to his right whenever there's danger. 
and he's hitting below the belt occasionally too. Hitting below the belt three or four times there. Richard Steele doing nothing. Then Oria willing to trade shot for shot with Julio Cesar Chavez. A lot of swelling under Del Oya's left eye. Looks like it might swell shut as the fight goes on. Remember, Chavez has been beaten like this round after round before in his life. But De La Hoya, this is new territory. De La Hoya is so conscious of offense with his left hand that he's sometimes susceptible on that side of his body. Oh, what a left hook. That's the meanest looking Oscar De La Hoya you've ever seen. It's a small cut. I'm going to stop the bleeding. Need some water inside the mouth so you can rinse. It's put some water in the vent. There you see that flurry at the end of the round. Chavez looking a little weary. It must be a fight. Chavez won't come out. He has refused to come out. The inside of his mouth bloody. And I am shocked. Shocked that a warrior like Chavez, once again, when he tastes his own blood, sits on his stool, won't come out and fight. Julio Cesar Chavez swore us yesterday. He said, if he beats me this time, I will give him the respect he deserves. Let's see if he will. We don't know if the doctor has said anything, though. Well, the doctor came in, George, and told the referee the fight could go on. But apparently that was a no muss from Chavez. He did his best, and when this guy kept having some sting into his power. For a 36-year-old guy who used to be a lightweight, he gave everything he had. Thank you. But still you expect him to go on. I think it was, Larry, right up until the moment it was Right up until the moment it ended, it was the best Chavez effort of the last several years. Must have been a fight. I've got blood splattered all over my scorecard. Ami Tambien. The white qua we told me once in a boxing match with me, he said, you know, I saw death. Sometimes you can see a lot of things in that ring, and then the doctor won't stop it. You got to come in and say, look, I got to have mercy on myself. And let's face it, George, what does Julio Cesar Chavez have left to prove at this point? He did the best he could. Believe me, the best. But Oscar kept giving more than his best. Well, it sets up a hell of a match on November 21. Oscar De La Hoya is going to take on Ike Corte. His toughest opponent yet. Oscar could have made that one of the toughest fights in his career because he just wanted to show off. It needn't to have been like that. Third loss of Chavez's career. Second time he's been stopped in a fight with Oscar De La Hoya. Okay, now that was the end of the preceding round. Here's what happened on Chavez's stool. A lot of that is breathing there. You try to get your tongue out and in to suck up. Yeah, you can see the blood coming out of his mouth. You think maybe his tongue was cut? Yeah, a lot of things can happen to you in those kind of combinations being thrown. Final punch stat numbers. Oscar De La Hoya's accuracy increased as the fight went on, but he got hit and hit more often than most anybody would have expected in one round. Chavez actually threw 90 punches against De La Hoya, and I'm not sure anybody has ever accomplished that against Oscar before. Jabs in the bout. De La Hoya cranked it up in the middle rounds and wound up landing 76 of 169. Once he got the jab in gear, it was clear that Chavez had no easy chance of getting back into the fight. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger's corner advised referee Richard Steele that he was unable to continue. The end comes at the end of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory, 
and still the defending and reigning undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, El Nino de Oro, the golden boy, Oscar de la Hoya. Through the eight rounds they completed, De La Hoya led on two scorecards by a three-point margin, 78-75, and on the third scorecard by a six-point margin, 79-73. So he was effectively in control of the bout at the moment at which it was stopped. a full house and they got their money's worth you know oscar was saved this time by his corner when clancy told him to move and box don't look for a knockout he changed the whole story good advice from gil clancy and why not the man's a legend